Hello all, in this video we will have an introduction to context free grammar. Formally defining context free grammar is a quadruple N T P S where N is a set of non terminals. See, uh, yeah, I'll explain it. Then T is a set of terminals, P is a set of predictions, and S is the start symbol of the grammar. For example, uh, if uh, there is a grammar like E gives E plus C, E gives E starry, E gives ID like this. Then, uh, if explaining on the basis of this, N is a set of non terminals. See, to understand non terminals easily, in case of a context free grammar, non terminals will be appearing on the left hand side of the production rule. See, um, I mean, uh, a production rule is of the format A gives B. So, the left hand side symbol of the production, of, this is known as a production. So, the left hand side of the production is known as non terminals. So here we can see that only one symbol is appearing on the left hand side of the productions and that is E. So E is the only non-terminal which is appearing here. So E is the only non-terminal here. Then T is a set of terminals. Terminals are the symbols that will never appear on the left hand side. So here ID is a symbol that doesn't appear on the left hand side of any production. So uh, that is how we understand it simply. So ID is a terminal. Now, P is a set of predictions. Here we can, we can see three prediction rules. That is E gives E plus E. E gives E starry. And E gives ID. These are the prediction rules written here. So, uh, that is the um, set of predictions P. Uh, see, in case of a prediction, there will be only one non-terminal to the left hand side. And there can be any number of terminals or non terminals on the right hand side that is this is actually non terminal uh, in context free grammar the production rules are the format some non terminal is giving non terminal union terminal the whole star that is any string which is made up of non terminals and terminals can appear on the right hand side but on the left hand side you will have a single non terminal that is why it is uh, known as context free grammar because the left hand side symbol does not have any uh, left side context or right, right side context. It's free. It just I mean, only one non terminal will be appearing on the left hand side. That is the speciality of context free grammar, and this is why it is known as context free grammar. That is, the non terminal on the left hand side does not have a left context to right context. It is all allowing. Yeah. So, on the right hand side, it can be any string made up of non terminals and terminals. That makes sense. So this is how we write the predictions. Now the start symbol is usually the left hand side of the first prediction rule unless otherwise specified. So in this case uh, no start symbol is specified. I have simply written a grammar. So the left hand side of first prediction rule is E. So E is the start symbol here. So this is how we define a context free grammar. That is context free grammar is a quadruple N set of non terminals. I um, mean, symbols which are appearing on the left hand side of predictions. T, the set of terminals, symbols that will not appear on the left hand side of any prediction. P is a set of prediction rules, all the predictions will be listed. Then, uh, test of the format, some non terminal is giving non terminal union terminal the whole state. that is any string made up of terminals and non terminals on the right hand side. And S is the start symbol of the grammar, it is usually the left hand side of first prediction unless the Y specified. So now we will see uh, how we can derive strings from the grammar or derive the language of the grammar. For example, if we are taking the same grammar E gives E plus C, E gives or E gives E star, we can write it like this. E gives, you don't have to repeat the left hand side but the same, E gives E star or E gives ID, isn't it? I mean this is the example that we are taking. So in this case, if I want to derive the expression ID, plus id star id what should i be doing is i will take i will i will always start from the start symbol so i am starting from e now 
see dervish nas uh, using this i mean uh, i mean specified using this double line arrow so from e i can derive e plus c is in it single line arrow for predictions and double line arrow for derivations from this e i can convert this into e plus c now i can convert the first e into id because e also derives id right so e gives id now plus then this id i need e star i mean uh, id star id here so i have to somehow bring star into the context isn't it so i can expand this e as e star e because e also have uh, so e also has such a production so again uh, id now this e can be converted into id and in the next step i can convert the remaining uh, e into id so this is how i generate id plus id star id see if you see this this is the derivation uh, of a string from the given grammar and if you see this you can always see that i have always replaced the leftmost non terminal with an alternative see in this case e gives e plus c in this case this e has been replaced with id isn't it okay now in the uh, next phase i have replaced the second e with e star e okay the second e is replaced with e star e now um, a few confused we can write one more step that is id plus e now the second uh, then first e has been converted to id then the second e is retained as it in the next case the first non terminal the leftmost non terminal is capital e now this capital e this has been replaced to e star e so in this step the leftmost non terminal is this capital e that has been replaced with id and in this case the leftmost non terminal see these are the terminals tokens so this is a leftmost non terminal that has been replaced with id so uh, if you look at this definition i was always replacing the leftmost non terminal with a um, terminal so um, this uh, kind of derivation is known as leftmost derivation we will write ln as an abbreviation ln stands for leftmost see so we also have the rightmost derivation in that case we will be replacing the rightmost non terminal with a, with an alternative for example e gives e plus c i'm doing i'm starting the same production e gives e plus c now uh, the rightmost e the rightmost non terminal is this one is it i am replacing that e with e star e okay now uh, again the rightmost non terminal here is this e so i am replacing that e with id because all i want to derive is id plus id star id now again uh, this is the rightmost non terminal now we send it so we can replace that with id and in the next step this is the rightmost non terminal is send it so we can replace that with id id plus id star id so see in this case i have always replaced the rightmost non terminal with Uh, the corresponding alternative so this is known as rightmost derivation we can write rm as an abbreviation under every arrows derivation arrows okay see now uh, this last line do not contain doesn't contain any non terminal isn't it so this is known as a sentential form of the grammar as it was obtained using leftmost derivation sentential form sentential form that is the right i mean of the rest of production like a gives uh, a derives some alpha in zero mosfets this alpha is known as a sentential form here uh, this is a sentential form of this grammar as it doesn't contain any non terminal this can also be known as a, called as a sentence so as we obtain this using leftmost derivation we will call this as right left sentential form again this is the right sentential form of the grammar because we obtain this using rightmost derivation so sentential form is just the right hand side obtained during some derivation so if the rightmost part just contain uh, terminals we can call that also a sentence of the grammar so this is how we derive this now we can represent the very same thing whether it is leftmost derivation or rightmost derivation 
using trees we are calling such trees as derivation trees actually they are the pictorial or graphical representation of the derivation see here we are starting from the start symbol always and the start symbol gives you e plus e isn't it e plus e now this first e has been converted to id isn't it now the second d has been converted to e star e isn't it now this e has been converted to id and this e has been converted to id in the next step so this becomes id plus id star id isn't it the very same thing that is uh, parse tree or derivation tree is the graphical representation of a derivation a pictorial representation of a derivation mm, the interior nodes will usually be a non terminal and the exterior nodes or leaf nodes will be definitely terminals or top and see here the leaf nodes are id plus id star id all these are top ends so terminals is indeed the interior nodes are ease they are the non terminal so in, in case of a parse tree the interior nodes will be non terminals and exterior nodes will be terminals and again the yield of the tree is the sentence which you read from left to right when you are reading the leaf notes from left to right id plus id star id that is said to be the yield of the tree so this is all this is all about context free grammars leftmost derivation rightmost derivation sentential form sentences and parse trees hope you understood thank you